So welcome everyone. I'd love to uh, welcome you to the first ever Greg Farrell inaugural award. So my name is Dennis Udall and I'm a member of the award committee. And we're here to honor this year's recipient, Pascal Florestal. And as you can see, we, uh, from the slide here, we have a packed agenda. Uh, at this point, you know, I think most people are pretty familiar with Zoom, but just in case, here are a couple tips. So first, um, we're gonna spend the first few minutes getting to know one another. So if you already know how to do it, I'd invite you to insert your name if it doesn't already appear. But if you don't know how to do this, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's a little complicated to do. So second, um, you might want to change your view to speaker view so that everyone can, you can see everyone. And you can do that. That can be done by clicking in the very up right hand corner there where it says view. You click on it and there's an option that says side by side speaker view. So that's how you do that. And finally, uh, we'd like to invite everyone to please stay, stay muted, except when you go into the breakout rooms. And you can find that mute button down there in the lower left-hand corner. So now, <laughs> this wouldn't be a Greg Farrell Award if we didn't jump right into some engaging activity to discover who's on this call and what we all have in common. So let's get started. All right, mm -hmm. that's my cue because tonight, my name is Susan McRae and I am your game master for tonight. And we're gonna jump right into a game. Um, so I'm gonna start by sharing my screen and showing you what we have in store for you. Um, what you can see here is that we have a Greg Farrell Award bingo game. Yes, Greg Farrell Award, bingo. Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do as your game master, so um, pay attention, look live. Um, I'm going to drop into the chat for you a document for you to open. Um, those who are familiar with how to do this, you click on that link and it's gonna take you directly to this very doc that I'm looking at, okay? So I want everyone, I'm a teacher, so I want you all to follow what I say, <laughs> um, to open up that doc if you can. And it is quite all right if you can't. Um, and we're gonna play some Greg Farrell Award Bingo. And here's how this works. I'm gonna, in a moment, send you all to breakout rooms. And you're gonna be in a room with, a, with about five or six other folks. This breakout room, becomes your team. This is highly competitive, okay? You want to win. Um, however, the first thing you're gonna do before you even get started on the game is you're gonna introduce yourselves. I'm gonna be tight on the clock here and I'm gonna give you exactly two minutes to introduce yourself. So that is 20 seconds per person. Um, and you know, say your name and what brings you here tonight? What is your connection to this event, okay? Um, simply that. After two minutes, I'm going to send a message to you all, at which point the game is going to begin. So let me explain the game. Um, you are going to have a moment to open up a bingo card. In this doc is a series of bingo cards. So the first thing you're going to do is there's a box over here that allows you to go directly to your bingo card. So if you're in breakout room number five, then you're going to play on bingo card number five. Breakout room eight, you're gonna play on bingo card number eight. You're muted, Susan. How long have I been muted for? Just a minute. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Um, okay, so um, you can either toggle here or you can just scroll down the side of your screen and you can see that they just correlate with pages. Okay, so you're gonna go to your, your breakout room bingo card. And this is when the game begins. First thing you wanna do is 
assign a scribe and your scribe will be the person who can also share their screen. That's ideal. If somebody in your group knows how to do that, that would be great. They could open the doc, share their screen, and then nobody else needs the doc open. Um, so then here we go. We have some categories for you. And the way you play bingo, right? You got to fill a square. And the way you're going to fill a square in this bingo is you need to identify for each square a way in which either Greg Farrell, Pascal, any of the nominees, or somebody even in your breakout room who has a connection to the category on that square. They have a story that relates to that square. So for example, here we have a yoga square. Maybe you know that Pascal once did yoga on a surfboard off the coast of Thailand. In which case you're gonna write in the box, Pascal's name and surfboard Thailand, okay? Um, and then you're gonna try to fill in rows and you get points, you get points for rows, you get mega points if you fill in the whole box and you get extra points for detail, all right? Um, so that's the gist. I'm gonna send you to a breakout room. You're going to have six minutes. Well, you're gonna have two minutes to introduce yourselves. You're gonna have six minutes to play bingo. One person scribes for you. And I will let you know when your six minutes is up and it's time to come back. Um, and you should come back. I hope that some of you will be willing and ready to share one remarkable story that you just heard. Um, and here's my last tip for you. If none of this works, <laughs> you can't figure out how to access this doc. Just enjoy each other's company and talk to each other for six minutes. Um, you can also, you can send me a note in the chat if you want, or you can return to the main room if you're struggling and you want a little tip on how to make this work. Okay. Um, so at this point, are there any questions before I send you all on your way? Does this kind of make sense? And unmute yourself if you need to ask a question. Anybody have a question? Okay. Um, in which case, I'm going to send you off on your breakout rooms. Um, and really, most importantly, have fun. <laughs> All right, off you go. So you should, you should have received a message that says um, join breakout room and you just click on that message and it will take you to the breakout room. So just follow the instructions on your screen. Okay, so we have, I do think we have some folks who've just arrived. Um, so does anybody else here have a... Um... Yeah, I, I came in, uh, Mor I'm Morley Goldberg. Okay, great, welcome, welcome, welcome. So we are playing a game. We um, a we're a game. Trying to get a hold of everybody. Yeah, it's so what I will try to do, I'm gonna send you off to one of, I'm just gonna send you to a group. Okay, so anybody who's here who's not assigned, I'm gonna send you um, to a room. So off you go. Well, you talk first. And I'm uh, Jack Woods when it comes to people now. And others of you. Um, who's ever best at technology? Let's see. Um, others in the room, are you? History, geography. Yeah. Anybody here have a question for me?
Um, so our folks here who are still back here, have you um, been, let's see. Looks like, um, yeah. Hi, Claire. Um, do you all need help getting to a breakout room? Hi, it's uh, cool. I'm used, uh, so that would be great. Thank you. Okay, let me see if I can get you all off to some breakout rooms. Um, for some reason, let's see. Um, I don't. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what happened. Um, Because I see that you you all have been assigned. Let's see, Claire. Huh? Did you not see? Huh? Let's see if I can. Um, I'm afraid I don't seem to see you on my list, nor have an ability. Oh, shoot. Okay, so welcome folks who have just arrived. We are actually in the middle of playing a game. Now I have many people in breakout rooms. Um, so if you just wanna sit tight until the game is over, it will only be a few more minutes um, and just uh, enjoy this time. And um, I will, you know, the game will be ending in about four minutes. So just um, relax. I can certainly, I can assign you of three folks who've just arrived. I could send you to a room if you'd like to go and see what people are up to. Um, I could do that. Would you guys like to join a room? Sure. Great. Okay, yeah. I will send you off. I've just done I, that. I was in room one. Okay, I think, um, great. I can send you back to room one. Thank you.
Hello. Um, welcome. Welcome to those who've just arrived. Um, we're in the middle of playing a game. And I'm happy to send you off to a breakout room. We will only be in the game for a couple more minutes, but I will send you off, okay? Um, if you're interested, and let's see, it won't be for long, but here you go. Feel free to head to this breakout room if you like. There should be a flag that will come up on your screen. If you click on that, you'll, you'll be taken to the breakout room. All right, everyone should be regathering now. They will all, all breakout rooms will close in 19 seconds. We should have everyone back in four seconds. All right. Well, welcome back, participants. That was really <laughs> fun. Way to start us off in the spirit. All right. So, well, well, I um, just so you all know, um, Greg Farrell Award Bingo has never been played before. <laughs> so this is the inaugural run. I hope something happened out there. We had a few technical glitches. Some folks didn't make it, or one room was small. But I'm hoping it was fun and gave you a chance to say hi. Um, so let's do this first. Um, very importantly, I want you to shout um, on my call, if you got a row, if any team completed a row right this minute, say bingo. 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 Oh, nice. <laughs> um, okay. Did any, if you filled in the whole board, did anybody fill in the whole board? Yeah. Bingo. Oh, oh really? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Very impressive, very impressive. We love bingo. Nice, <laughs> nice. All right, is there, um, and now actually, is there one person who would be willing to um, share a remarkable story or detail that you just learned in your bingo game? And I'm happy to call on folks in my teacherly way, but if anybody would be willing, we could hear one story detail, most remarkable one. We have a good story I'll share, All right, Susan. Great. Um, Ryan, thank Pascal's you. brother shared with us that at their wedding, when they kissed, there was a rainbow in the background that emerged. Oh, oh, that's awesome. That's beautiful. That's a great story detail. Thank you. All right, one more, one more. That one was too good. One more, and then we'll move on. Anybody else want to share up um, a story I learned, detail? I had Dan in my group, and I learned a lot of like, I've always been curious about the work he did in Keene with schools because I've heard a lot about like EL and Outward Bound, but it was interesting to hear like how he brought that into Keene Valley. 
Beautiful. Great. Nice. Well, um, folks who are just arriving, um, welcome. We have just finished playing a game. So um, thank you all for playing. That was so fun. Okay, so thank you, Susan, and, and thank you, Dennis, for leading us uh, through that, I think, very Greg-like activity. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Richard Stoppel, and it's, it's just really gratifying uh, for me to uh, see that so many of you uh, are able to join us this evening, and, and welcome again to everyone. And I want to extend a special welcome to uh, the members of Greg's family, and the member of Pascal's family who are joining us uh, this evening. And uh, in, in a few minutes, we're gonna get to the evening's main event, which is the presentation of the inaugural Greg Farrell Award to Pascal Florestal. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to just take a few minutes to say a few words about the award and how it came to be, and also about the really extraordinary group of nominees who we had the privilege of considering for this initial award, initial award. So the award was created by a group of individuals, and we're going to put the, their names up on a, on, this, on a slide, who worked with Greg uh, 30 years ago in, uh, in starting NYC Outward Bound Schools, and, um, and then and really developed a three-decade-long relationship uh, with Greg, which he served as our friend, our mentor, and, and continuing source of inspiration. And when Greg died uh, last spring, uh, we all knew that we wanted to do something that would allow us to express our love for Greg and also uh, serve to keep his legacy alive. And after many uh, Zoom calls, we settled on this idea of creating an annual award in his name and, and through which we would attempt to, uh, to capture and celebrate his unique spirit, which we uh, encapsulated in the tagline that's up in the right-hand corner of that slide, lighting sparks, living boldly, leaving the world a better place. And then after another series of Zoom calls, we, set, uh, we, we came up with the award criteria and uh, we began soliciting the process of soliciting nominations, uh, seeking out worthy individuals and organizations from among, among Greg's uh, really rich network of contacts. And I would say that perhaps the most gratifying aspect of, of this whole process has been that our efforts yielded such a um, really remarkable group of nominees, 25 in all, which was also, uh, you can see this terrific group of nominees on the slide. And, and uh, you know, and, and far and away the most challenging aspect of this process was having to select a single recipient from among this list. And, and if you look at the list, you, you'll see why that's the case. It, it's, the mix of individuals and organizations who I think really highlight, reflect uh, the kind of vast range of Greg's uh, interests, influence, impact, and who are doing really uh, life-changing and trailblazing work in many fields and many locales around the globe. So we were just so honored to, uh, to receive each one of these nominations. And in honoring Pascal this evening, we really are truly honoring and celebrating this entire group of nominees. And so with that in mind, I'm going to turn things over to my friend and colleague, Tana Thomas, who's going to lead us in the presentation of the award to Pascal. Thank you, Richard. And hello, everyone. It's really with great excitement and pleasure that I introduce you all to the very first recipient of the Greg Farrell Award, Pascal Florestal. And as Richard just mentioned, thanks to so many of you in Greg's far reaching network, we received these 25 wonderful nominees from a wide range of geographies and fields, including education and the arts. And Pascal Florestal bridges both of these fields, working as a theater director and an educator, a writer, and also community organizer, always emphasizing themes of joy and uh, equity and social justice. 
our award team, excuse me, selected Pascal because of how she exemplifies the, the um, personal qualities and life experiences and, and life choices that we all admired and treasured so much in Greg and that are summed up in, in that tagline, um, lighting sparks, living boldly and leaving the world a better place. Like Greg, Pascal at heart is an educator and she uses the creative and collaborative elements of theater to light sparks, particularly in young people, helping them find their voice and discover their best selves and use their special gifts and, and talents to tackle challenging personal and social issues, um, whether they're in kindergarten or in college, as I understand. She lifts people up to do their best work and helps them discover that they have and they are more than they ever thought. You know, that sounds pretty much like Outward Bound and sound like Greg, doesn't it? And like Greg, Pascal lives boldly. She's an adventurer and a risk taker who thinks outside the box and experiments with new ways and new means for reaching out to others. And already she has a formidable resume of, of work with theater companies in the Boston area, like the Huntington Theater Company, the um, Speakeasy Stage Company, and the French, fr the French, the front, <laughs> the front porch arts collective. She's considered a rising star in the theater world there and helping to transform it by making it more inclusive. Pascal's passion and goal is to leave the world a better place, the world of theater, the world of education, and the world in general. And, um, and by, inspire, by inspiring and guiding budding young artists, she reduces, she's, re, she's reducing the cultural segregation in the arts and making theater companies and theater audiences more inclusive and, and making and inspiring Boston to be a more, uh, a better place that's more tolerant and inclusive. And as her nominator, Paul Anyo, who's also a theater person says, Pascal is the future of our country. So as, as most of you know, Greg was both a, an educator and a thespian himself. <clears throat> and he taught high school at Punahou and he taught, of course, all of us who ever worked with him. And in college, he found great fun and joy as a member of Princeton's famed Triangle Club. And along with his wife, Kathy, he probably knew the words and lyrics and probably dance steps to most of the, the popular Broadway musicals. He used to tell us at Outward Bound, at New York City Outward Bound, that he really thought theater was the perfect analog for an, um, for an Outward Bound course because it inspired so much creativity and new learning and teamwork and collaboration and, um, <clears throat> breaking out of one's comfort zone and heading out into the unknown and ultimately understanding that one's success it depends on everybody else's success. So we're all connected and we're all community. So just to remind everybody, the Greg Farrell Award comes with a $5,000 cash gift, which many of Greg's friends and fans and family have contributed very gener generously to and to whom we owe a great big thank you. And under normal conditions, we would be handing a check to Pascal in person. But in this case, we've already mailed it to her. But in addition, Pascal has received some another part of the cash award, something that's less materially valuable, but we, which meant, but which meant a lot to Greg and means a lot to us. And we hope will to you to Pascal. So I'm gonna let my friend and um, fellow award team member tell you more about it, Thea Lerner. Yeah. All right, can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, so I have a little story, Pascal, about the, the, the background of this little gift. And um, it involves a river trip that many of the people that are on the award committee went on with Greg. And I want you to picture a, um, a, a time on the Green River. It's been hot all day. We're tired. We get into camp and it's, it starts raining and we're a little weary, but we gather in a circle. We tell stories and there's a lot of joy between us. And um, it ends up being an incredibly special moment 
kind of not like a theater production coming together and uh, the, the, the group um, having that moment together. And Greg, in his way, uh, which he was very good at, great at telling stories, um, all of a sudden produced something and maybe open your box now and hold up what's inside. <laughs> There's lots of stuff inside the inside, so hold on, come on. <laughs> Okay. So as she's doing that, I'll, I'll share with you that this was um, sourced by Jeannie, who's on the committee, by a craftsman who used to actually coincidentally work for Outward Bound, but made, it, um, made this little token for this occasion. Um, the suspense. <laughs> oh, the, the wooden spoon. Wow, this is beautiful. Spoon. It was on the bingo card. Yes. <laughs> and it's here in my hand and some of the other people also have that. So I just, I think for us, it, you know, spoons relate community, you know, it's a, a, a fellowship act that um, sharing food, sharing, sharing this token embodies, but it's also this craftsmanship, which I think theater and, um, and Greg was very much a proponent of simple simplicity and craftsmanship and also this notion of self-reliance that it doesn't have to take big materialistic um, endeavors but just that you can craft something simple and Bill Cothwood, uh, I can't pronounce the name, Cothwood um, wrote a book that he was very much an advocate of and we were, we got to meet him you can see this, the, the, how the beauty of something simple and something simply crafted. So with that, we're kind of thrilled to have you join our extended Greg Farrell Outward Bound community and hope you can remember as you've spent the 5,000 on all kinds of things that this will be with you. I, I think we won't be able to see the inscription, but you will see that the, it is inscribed for you. Oh, it's so beautiful. Thank you all so much for this. Wow. Oh, I can't wait to put this in my house, which is what I use money for it for my first house that I'm buying with my wife Friday. <laughs> wow, what timing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and with that, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, I just thank you all so much to the committee. Paul Danielle for nominating me. I am internally grateful, but especially want to thank Greg. I didn't personally know him, but from stories I've been told, he sounds like a man I too would love to learn from and share space with. A man dedicated to helping young people, believing in them and giving them the space and opportunities to become their best selves. I, like many others, have been lucky and privileged to have people in my life like Greg who inspired me and provided me the courage and motivation to get to where I am today. Growing up in Miami, Florida, I never saw my life taking me here. Though I tried to find the words for this speech, I thought back to my roots, my early beginnings. I come from a family of educators, people who love to learn and teach. Both my parents, immigrants from Haiti, were educators. My father taught math for years and then worked as the assistant principal for the night school at Toussaint Levator Elementary in Little Haiti. And my mother was an ESL teacher there too. So my after school nights were spent roaming the halls of Toussaint Levator, making evening announcements, assisting the secretaries, visiting my mom's class, sitting in my dad's desk, always a helper, always someone who wanted to be a part of something. For many years, I wasn't sure what my path was, but I was always determined and motivated to get to this place of success, whatever that meant. Though my parents hoped I would one day become a lawyer or maybe a doctor, my first love has always been performance and storytelling. It started with dance, primarily ballet. There was a time I dreamed of being a dance, a ballet professional, but as a chubby, fair-skinned Black girl, it was hard for me to fit in, feel seen, feel comfortable. It wasn't until I went to a different dance school that I had teachers who looked like me when things changed. It was the first time I had a teacher who was a plus-size Black woman who showed interest in me and could understand me. Not every teacher has that ability. Those special ones are the ones who leave an imprint on you forever. There were so many of those on my path to here. 
Mrs. Smith in third grade gave me my first public speaking opportunity when I got to say a speech about my love for America or Mrs. Wilcox from fourth grade who introduced me and my class to Roots. Yes, I, as a nine-year-old child, saw the first six VHS tapes of Roots. And I can say I am the most grateful for that experience. It changed me. Seeing Alex Haley's story sparked something in me that wouldn't be reignited till years later in high school at the auditorium of North Miami Beach Senior High. There was Mrs. Martinez, my fifth grade teacher who reminded me that failure is not the end, but just the beginning. Though I still struggle with failure, I try to remind myself and every student I encounter it is always a lesson and never a failure. I think one of the most influential for me was my drama teacher, Daphne Seagray. She set the path for me. She gave me the space to be me and provided me the opportunities that led me here. A quick but important tangent. I recently had the opportunity to work with her on a project over 10 years since I was her student. She was the education consultant, I was the dramaturg, and the project was a web series for young children trying to understand racism and how to deal and overcome it. It was such a full circle moment for me to be working as this professional theater artist with a teacher who got me into this thing, who inspired me. After years of being taught by such great teachers, I felt inspired to try myself. I went to Ithaca from the advice of a teacher and spent the summers as a theater camp counselor learning, failing, succeeding, and falling more in love with this work. I decided this might be the path for me. Maybe teaching, working with young people, creating theater was my way, my thing. That path has taken me to City or Miami, the Huntington, Company One, the American Alliance of Theater Educators, the Theater Offensive, the Bach Performing Arts Center, the Greater Boston Stage Company, many others, so many Boston public schools I can't even count. It was not an easy path. I'm grateful for all the people I met along the way that guided me and believed in me. Donna Glick, Meg O'Brien, Harold Stewart, Paul Danio, Kimberly Sr., Don Simmons, Maurice Parent, Evelyn Francis, Nick Basil, and so many others. I thank you all immensely for giving me the opportunities you did and believing in me. To my fellow teaching artists and collaborators, sharing space with you has been an honor and privilege. I appreciate so much of what I've learned from, from and with you. And then there are my students. They taught me as much as I taught them. From every theater program, residency, class, workshop, every student gave me something that I forever hold in my practice as an educator and artist. And last, but certainly not least, is my partner and wife. An amazing music educator and incredible musician her herself, they inspire me every day to be a better teacher, watching them connect with their students, sharing ideas for lesson plans, working together on shows and teaching students together. It's the best feeling to share my love and passion with the person I love. How lucky I am to have you, Katie. So I wanna thank you for getting me through every doubt I had about myself, this path and where I was going. Thank you all so much. I'm so glad you all are here. Pascal, that was amazing. And I just encourage <laughs> folks to uh, unmute and just give like a little bit of bit of love back to Pascal for a minute. Oh, Woo! Congratulations! Congratulations. Yay. 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 Pascal! Yay, Pascal! Yay, Pascal! Love you! Yay. 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 We are so proud of you. Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> loud. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I well, I want to hear from friends and family of yours, Pascal. Anyone <laughs> you want to share? What was that, Thea? Oh, I, I just can go. Hi. Hi. Hold on, hold on. I am Pascal's father, and uh, it, it, I'm so I'm so excited. I I, I wish this was uh, something that would happen live because I would have gone over whether it's New York or Boston, wherever that is, I've been always dreaming of surprising her in one of the performances. 
just coming in one night and then sit in the audience and watch her uh, her performance and then and then after that go surprise and showing my face there just I always want to do that I don't know maybe one day I'll do that but this is this is as close to it as it could be um I don't know I don't know what else to say I'm so proud of her it's it's amazing uh how she dedicated herself and how her passion has taken her so far and uh honestly i can tell you knowing her for all the time i've known her i can tell you one little story when uh when we did the uh take your daughter to to, to work day and uh, like she said i was an assistant principal and she came to my school and i had to go down to the district's office to take care of something i went with her and my uh my supervisor just like talking to her and uh and then she would look back she, she took her over to her boss and she said, this is Gary's daughter, Pascal. She's eight going on 30. <laughs> so that's how advanced she was at the time. And I knew she was going to go far. And uh, Pashu, I'm so proud of you. I love you. You know how much I love you. And I, I, can't, I can't wait to see how far you're going to go. And nothing that you're going to do will surprise me. Love you. All right. No, that's a that's amazing. I'm sure we could go through a lot of love, uh, but I also you know just want to uh, be respectful of folks' time. But thanks, Dad. Uh, being a dad myself of a three of three kids, uh, I could just feel how much o overwhelming love you feel, and uh, I think it's shared amongst the amongst the group. My name is uh, Paul Herdman, and I'm one of the Outward Bound instructors that worked under Richard and Greg back in the 80s. And now I run a, a foundation in uh, Delaware called Rodell. Uh, my role tonight is really threefold. One is uh, to just say some thanks. Second is to talk about how we might stay connected and grow this group. And then third is to pass the baton to my dear friend, Dennis, to, to close us out. So uh, first, thanks to all of us, all of those who uh, brought this uh, day to this point. Um, there were all of you who nominated uh, this great pool of candidates and we appreciate your thought and, and thinking deeply about what Greg's spirit meant to you. Uh, there were all those who contributed to this award and uh, Santa was one of the key folks who started this, but there was a number of you who, who chipped in as well and that'll enable us to broaden this pool over time. There were all those amazing uh, nominees, uh, many of you who are on this call now, who shared your stories with us. And as Richard Chair, you shared you, you cross continents and fields, and you truly are lighting sparks and, and living boldly. Um, uh, thanks to the small team that Richard alluded to that helped uh, work through this process. To be honest, it was a joy. Uh, we spent a lot of time on Zoom calls together, drinking wine and laughing, sharing stories. It was not a tough duty to learn more about these amazing people and um, to remember Greg. And a special thanks to uh, Nick and Andy for entrusting us to, to, to run with this uh, with the loose confidence of their dad that somehow this would work out. Um, and a final thanks to, to Santa who put this idea on the table and we wouldn't be here without her. So how can we keep this going? How can we grow this network? When I was talking to some of the nominees, uh, you were excited to hear about Pascal. You were in theater also, you worked with kids, you wanted to connect. So my team and I spoke with uh, Paula, who's also on this, this award team. And um, we created a LinkedIn site for this group. Um, Paula will put that in the chat and we'll send it around to you in an email. But all you need to do is hit the link and you'll have an access to a, a protected site where you can share the work you're doing, uh, get to know one another, in general, expand the circle. Uh, we'll follow up as we work to assemble the next pool of nominees this summer, but I have a little two-part challenge for you. Uh, one is to join the site, which may or may not be a challenge for you, depending on your technical skills. Uh, and two, get to know someone else in this group that you don't already know. Uh, my guess is that Greg would quietly smile if he knew that you did. Finally, to close this out, I'm going to pass the baton to my dear friend, Dennis, who started us off. Uh, we worked together in New York City. Uh, 
we really got to know each other though when I asked to crash in his East Har Harlem uh, walk up one weekend and didn't leave for several months. Um, <laughs> alongside each other in New York, then lived on the same street in Somerville uh, after grad school, not too far from our friends Susan and Leah. Our kids, now nearly grown, have shared river adventures. And um, this Thanksgiving, uh, when my oldest, now 24, was living in Berkeley, is still there, uh, and couldn't come home for COVID, um, it was comforting to know that she could spend the day with Dennis's family. The point of sharing this story is that we're all part of Greg's network of love. And I know he and we certainly want it to grow. So with that, I'll pass uh, the baton to, to Dennis to close us out and uh, thanks everyone. Thanks, Paul. You're, you're a roommate made, made in heaven. Appreciate yeah. it. So that's about all, all we have time for today. Uh, you know, this has just been such a great way to honor Greg, to honor Pascal. And we learned some wonderful and inspiring things about each of them. And we've seen how, in fact, as Paul said, we're all connected in private ways, in, in surprising ways. And it brings to mind what Greg was fond of pointing out, that there's so much in us that we often don't know, that we're often not aware of. So it's fitting that we end with a quote from one of Greg's great mentors, Kurt Hahn, the founder of Outward Bound. This is what Kurt Hahn wrote. There is more in us than we know if we could be made to see it. Perhaps for the rest of our lives, we will be willing, unwilling to settle for less. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>